Hello! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make homemade bread and buns. I'm going to start by adding some hot water. You want to keep it below 120 degrees because that will kill your yeast. If it was above 120 degrees, you're going to add two scant tablespoons, so about two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. And then we're going to let that sit for about 10 minutes and rehydrate and let that yeast get heavy. And here's about what it looks like when it's done. Next, I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. This is a double recipe. It will make two loaves or a loaf and a batch of buns, which is about six to eight buns, depending on how big you make them. I add the oil first to get my spoon a little bit greasy so that when I add the honey, it slides off. Here, I wiped my spoon off too much and it got too dry, so I'm gonna end up having to scrape it off anyway, but that happens sometimes, so that's okay. I like to use raw honey in my bread recipe. I like the way it tastes. You can use sugar or some other type of sweetener. Um, you could also use a different type of oil. I prefer olive oil because it's quick and easy. Um, sometimes I'll use coconut oil. You can also use butter. Um, any kind of natural oil. So again, two tablespoons of honey. I like raw honey for the health benefits. So that's just what we prefer to use. And then feel free to lick the spoon. Most of my friends know that's how I roll in my house. So next I'm gonna add my bread flour. I use a hard red wheat um, and I mix it with an all-purpose white flour, but I do like to add a little bit of whole wheat. That's just what my family prefers, prefers, excuse me. So flour choice is up to you. You can replace it with a different kind of flour if you prefer. And I'm going to start mixing it with my dough hook here. I like to let it mix for about 30 seconds uh, between adding more flour. There is no exact flour recipe that I can give you. Um, for this recipe, I'm going to be probably using between six to eight cups of flour um, between the bread flour and the all-purpose flour. But it's not exact. It's not an exact science. It's all about feel and uh, texture and how the everything mixes together. So I'm also going to be adding some salt here. Um, I add about two teaspoons of salt, so a teaspoon per recipe. I think I'm using a half teaspoon here, so that's why I'm doing four. I use Redmond's real salt or a pink Himalayan salt, but some kind of mineral salt. I'm also going to be adding vital wheat gluten. Um, you can get just wheat gluten, but some kind of vital wheat gluten that's just simply wheat gluten. So if you're gluten intolerant, you're probably not watching this video, um, but this is a not gluten-free friendly recipe, obviously. I add gluten. Um, it makes the bread softer. I've done it without it, and I can't remember where I got the recipe from that suggested adding vital wheat gluten, but it has improved my bread recipe just vastly. We love the texture. It makes it so soft. Um, so it is something that I do add to my bread. It doesn't add anything bad. It's not a 
uh, pr preservative. It's nothing artificial. It's just the wheat gluten that's been removed from the bread and I'm adding more back in. And it improves the structure and the strength of the bread and it just makes it so soft. And more like a store-bought bed bread if that's what you're used to. So I'm gonna speed up the camera here and I'm just adding in more flour as I need to about every 30 seconds um, as I'm going about cleaning up and doing different things around my house. So I just come back and check on it, add a little bit more flour as I need to until it begins to clean up the bowl. So as you can see here, it's getting there. It's still really sticking to the bottom. So I'm going to continue adding flour until it stops doing that. And here you can see that it's really starting to clean up. When I say clean up the bowl, it's pulling that dough away from the sides of the bowl and cleaning up the bowl. I'm going to stop and check it here. And I'm checking for the texture, if it's still really sticky. And it's almost getting there. So I'm going to pull it off the dough hook and let it continue to mix. And, and I'll start adding my flour. I start with like the half cup and then I go down to like a quarter cup and I start adding just very small bits as it's getting clean. But you see how sticky it still is. That's still a little too sticky. So I'm going to add just a little bit more flour and let it continue to mix. And once it has gotten to where it's not sticky, it's not sticking to my hands anymore, it's cleaning up the bowl, that's when I am going to let it start to knead. So that's when I'm going to begin the official kneading process. And I just let mine knead in my bowl. Um, and it takes anywhere from about six to ten minutes, um, especially if I'm doing a double batch in my mixer. And so you can see here, it's it's gotten dry. It's not sticking in my hands anymore. So we're about to that point. I'm going to pull it off the hook one more time. I may come back and do this a couple of times as it needs, but I'm going to let it just knead, and then I can go about my business for about six minutes. And so here we are. It's time to check it. And you can see how clean that bowl is. Okay, this has been kneading for about six minutes, so it's time to check it. What you're looking for is just a really smooth texture. And I'll try to get it close enough where you can see um, what I mean by that. So I feel like we're almost there. See how smooth that is? And when I do that, it doesn't shred immediately. It's you want that gluten to be really strong and it doesn't so that it doesn't tear and break as soon as you pull on it. So they call that shredding. You don't want it to shred. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is pinch off a piece here. And I work it until it's kind of thin in the middle. And then I pull it until I can see the light through it. You can kind of see that you can see the light through it before it starts to rip. So it is ready. Sorry, I was just double checking. Um, so that means that my gluten is strong enough. So it has kneaded long enough. And sometimes it takes six minutes and sometimes it takes 10 minutes, sometimes it takes 12 minutes. It depends on 
of the bread, it depends on the day, temperature, how much flour you've got in there. Um, it, it varies, so there is not an exact recipe that I can even give you to go by um, as far as that goes. So what I'm gonna do now is I use olive oil and I'm just gonna oil my bowl. I use the same bowl because I don't like to do dishes. So I just take my loaf out and I just rub that oil around the pan, the bowl, and then I put the dough back in there and I'll just flip it over a few times, cut it on all sides. Then I'm just going to cover it with a towel and I stick it mine in the microwave with the light on and that gives it warm enough that it rises in less than an hour usually and um, and it keeps it from getting any draft on it so that's what you want you want a warm place that's draft free to rise for about an hour while your bread is rising I highly recommend getting out all your fall decorations and decorating for fall ignore my messy living room I'm decorating today not cleaning. Okay, it has definitely doubled in size and it is ready to punch down. I will punch it down and then I will wait five minutes before I start to form it up. That's one of those real satisfying things. This just lets the bread rest. Okay, so it's been resting for a few minutes. And I'm just gonna turn out my dough onto my floured surface here. I like to do this on my table because it's a little bit lower and I have a little bit better vantage point um, to do it from. So today I I promised I would show you how to make hot dog buns, so I am going to make a few hot dog buns, but I need hamburger buns this week, so I'm going to be doing that too, and I also need a loaf of bread. The recipe that I've done today makes two loaves, so that'll give me a few, uh, re one recipe of hamburger buns and then a one loaf of bread. So I'm just going to divide it in two. Go ahead and do the loaf of bread first. So what I typically do for my loaf of bread is I just flatten it out into kind of a rectangle shape. Not real exact. And then I just roll it up real tight. And then I pinch it together. You don't have to do this. You can just make it into a loaf if you want to, into a loaf shape and stick it in your pan. Um, I just found that my loaves turn out better shaped this way. All right, and so I'm gonna throw it on the table just to get any air to get out of the loaf here. I'll just do that five times. And I'm going to put it in my stone pan. I like to use these stone pans. It gives me a nice, consistent um, browning. I'm going to shape it in there. And then I'm going to let it rise again until it's doubled. All right. I try not to use a ton of flour here. I don't want more flour in my bread, but just keep from sticking to the table. Of course, it's not sticky at all. This bread's very smooth. Um, all right, so I'm dividing it in half, and I kind of form a loaf, kind of a little rectangle there, or an oval shape, try to get like a rectangle shape, and I don't measure, I just eyeball it, I cut it in half again, 
and they don't always turn out the same size. My hamburger buns especially. I cut it in half again. That gives me four. I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. For a hot dog bun, all I'm gonna do is um, take it and just roll it. I actually don't need flour on the surface for this. It's better to do with a little bit stickier surface because I would normally just roll it. It's not one to roll here. So I'm gonna put it on this because it's a little drier. But you can't see that. And then I'm just gonna roll it out. And these are going to expand. So I usually do them about like six inches long, which is basically like the length of my hand. And that usually gives me a pretty good bun size. So we'll do that again. Until this is, piece is a little bit, a little bit um, bigger, so it's a different one. I'm going to try to use about the same size piece. And I literally just shape it into like what a hot dog bun is going to look like. And then I put them almost touching on the thing on my pan here, again, the stone pan, um, because they're going to expand and then they'll end up touching each other. And I find that that helps things to rise a little bit better uh, when they're doing their second rise. They grow together and they touch each other and they kind of rise better. All right, so for, for um, hamburger buns, if I'm starting with just like my cut piece of dough here, all I do is take and pull it to the bottom, pinch it, and pull and pinch it. So I kind of pull it together and pinch it and pinch it. And I'm just pinching that, pulling it together and pinching it. And then I kind of mash it down until it gives me a nice round bun shape. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the hot dog buns. I'm just gonna put them on the surface not quite touching and let them grow together. So just pulling those edges in and pinching them in the middle until it gives me that hot dog shape and then that part goes on the bottom. I'm sorry, hamburger shape, round shape, whatever I say. Sorry y'all, I'm terrible at this narrating videos. That's why I don't do them. All right, not perfect, just what it is. And then I've got them spaced, whoop, <laughs> kind of like that, where they're just not quite touching. So I've got six hamburger buns and two hot dog buns. And I usually just set those in a warm place to rise, either in the oven with the light on or in the microwave with 
the light on underneath it and I let them rise. It usually takes about 30 minutes to double. My rolls and my bread is risen. You can see it's nice and domed on the top and it's about double in size. So I've set my oven to about 385. That's just where I like to do it. A lot of people that cook bread cook it at a higher temperature, but I find that this works well for my oven. So um, I'm just gonna stick it in the oven. I'm gonna leave it in there for 10 minutes. I'm gonna check the buns. They're usually done um, at about that time, 10, maybe 12 minutes. And I may flip them around. And, but I just want to get them a nice golden brown. Just ignore how dirty my oven is. And then the bread I will do for about 25 minutes. Um, but once I take these buns out, I'll flip the bread around so everything gets nice and brown evenly. And I always work with my light on because I'm always coming back and checking. Okay, it's been about 13 minutes. And those look ready. So I'm going to flip this around. Stick it back in there. I'm going to give that about 10 more minutes. These are looking nice and golden. Just gonna peek underneath here. They're looking pretty golden under there. I am actually just gonna leave these on the pan and just let the bottom get a little more toasty um, because this pan holds heat nicely. The bread I won't do that with. I will take it immediately and put it onto a cooling rack um, because I want it to stop baking but these I want to just continue baking on that pan for a few more minutes okay it's been 10 more minutes so I'm gonna check my bread sorry all right so we have a nice golden brown top so that should be ready i'm just going to use a butter knife to loosen up the size i didn't oil my pan this time um, sometimes i do sometimes i don't this pan uh, is very well seasoned so it doesn't always require it i'm going to just dump it out here okay and i'm just going to thump it on the bottom and i'm listening for like a hollow sound so that sounds good that sounds like it's ready all done okay now that it's done i let it cool on a um, baker's rack and until it is completely cool the same thing for my buns here um, they've gotten really soft on the top where they were hard when I first pulled them out of the oven so they're nice and done you can see that they bounce so you know they're done um, your bread you want to completely cool before you cut it and let all of that moisture stay inside and then definitely let it cool before you put it into any kind of bag so that it doesn't sweat um, and that will keep your bread fresh for uh, mine usually is good for four or five days no problem so good luck with your bread making ventures I wish you well all of my fellow bread makers hope you enjoyed the video